We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, could we um, delete the update EMS roster? Yes. And um, I would recommend to the board that the budget discussion be moved to afternoon business. That way, we can. That's what I was thinking. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Next, approved minutes. The minutes of November 4th, 2019. I make a motion to approve the minutes of November 4th, 2019. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. The minutes of November 13th, 2019. Do we have them? They were. No, you do not. Where's the agenda? Well, that was the site walk. That was the site walk, but there's not, not much here for that. Not much to the meeting. The right. Thing. So I'll add that back onto the next agenda. Okay. All right, next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? So, yeah, go ahead, sir. The uh, last select board meeting that I was in, We've all read the paper and just glossed over what <coughs> what the policy change was all about, and I'd like to know why that wasn't important information to give to the town. What What are you talking about as far as the policy change? You know what I'm talking about. In the paper, it was talking about Todd Thomas uh, not giving written notice that he was conducting business outside of his position. Right. Why was it not important to relay that to the town for public record? It wasn't a matter of that. It was it was something that we have been doing for 12 years, 13 years, a certain way we've been doing it. It was, uh, on our part, we didn't realize it was a policy. But the person, one of the people who was involved in making the policy is Dan. Well, I, I was on the board too, as it turns out. But okay. I, so I, actually don't think, I actually don't think we were. The, the policy that says um, a written letter had to be written, you know, had to be a written letter if someone sought a second job. Okay, that was sent to us as a recommendation from Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that we just, you know, identified and adopted. It was sent to us and we followed the model because they recommend that to towns, towns of all sizes. It may or may not fit for Morristown. In reality, it doesn't because there's only, what, three employees or something that that it would affect. No, there's more than that. But more than that. Anybody that's on non-collective bargaining. Non-collective bargaining, right. Correct. So, as, as far as Dan had been here, and I was on the board too, and Brian was too, um, we'd never required that, to have it be in writing, because we always did it where, if somebody wanted to have a second job, whereas, I, I, won't pick, I guess I'll pick on Erica, for example, she has she does pizza business on the side. You know that's really not a conflict of interest of any kind that we'd ever found. So she let Dan know that she was doing that verbally. That's fine for us. We don't we don't have a problem. We don't think it has to be done in writing. Um, and the same for Todd. Todd has a private consulting business that he helps other towns with zoning or different issues like that. As long as it doesn't affect Morristown, or in no way, in fact, he he actually screens it. He won't go work for a town that's going to end up in an issue that involves Morristown somehow. You know, anything that he did was a long ways away. You know, and it's no problem for us. We don't, as a board, we're like, you know, as long as it's not a conflict of interest of any kind, I don't think there's any reason to have it in writing. Now, the reason you have it in writing is if it is a problem, if it's, if it's a problem, Dan would send a letter saying, look, this is a conflict of interest. But it's the way it's happened, Todd's come to Dan and said, look, I'm doing this. We don't think it needs to be in writing. It's well, that's understandable from what you're saying. Right. Except that the people that credential Todd say it in their code of conduct. Um, that's not true. That's not true. So the newspaper was lying then? No, I yeah, but I think you need to read what the code of conduct is, and it's you know um, the the ethics said a salaried employee should, and you know when there's already a conversation 
with people that uh, did the ethics piece of that um, at the Planning Association. And although it's not settled, but Todd is actually not a salaried employee, he's an hourly employee. Yeah, it's unfortunate that um, all the facts aren't brought to light. You know, Tommy, Tommy contacted the board, he sent an email to everybody, and I answered him. In fact, I called him and talked to him. And he took a small part of our conversation and printed it, you know, which is unfortunate. Uh, because there was a lot more to it that actually was accurate data as far as we've been on the board. He's right that there was changes done, I believe it was July 29th of 2009, when we changed the policy, but I think a lot of that part was already in there anyway. It wasn't something we wrote. There's been revisions, there was another revision in 2004, there's been a bunch of them over the years. We didn't pull that part out at that point, and we should have because that's not how we did it. But we're the ones that decide what that policy is, like I said in the paper. We're the ones that decide it, and we can decide to change it as we need to. A good example that Eric brought up is Title 23 of the Motor Vehicle Laws of Vermont. There are so many open laws there that aren't even ap applicable to what people do nowadays. But they don't get changed until there's a problem that comes up. You know, and then it would be so painstaking for us to go through every single thing in our in the laws or, or our policies. They're not they're not laws. They're policies that we we write. Um, we change them as we see fit. We change them when it, when something comes up. It's not like we did anything wrong. Well, true. Well, we were violating you know our own policy that we put out. But we also were carrying on that way for 12 years or something like that. So it's not that we're hiding anything from the town. That situation well, I mean, it clearly wasn't straightforward with what was going on. Well, we not didn't select board meeting either. We didn't well, talk about it in the meeting that. because we'd all talked about it outside the meeting. Right, but I mean, it's the town that's involved. How is how is that? It, it was a policy that that we put for the staff. Right, but you're talking about an employee that routinely shows up for questionable conduct and for all of these things. That's his name has been in the paper that, several yeah, times over right the last, his name has been in the paper several times. And each of those are an independent issue. Each one of those should be seen unto itself, not collectively. Right, sure. And I think that but when you have a series of events like that. It can be misconstrued as a problem employee. I would not label any of our staff in any of our offices as a problem employee. So just because the name shows up in the newspaper, and again, the my one looking at is behind the articles. I'm seeing the same name in all these articles, and the same question with the same name attached to it coming in my email. So I'm going to say, to your point, that his name routinely showing up in the newspaper articles does not convict him of a thing. I'm not we take each of these issues independently, we look at it, we balance it out against the good of our employees, our staff, and our town, and we make a decision based on that. And that's where we're at with this. It would, we were violating our own policy. We changed it because we didn't feel it was necessary and important for our staff to give us a letter telling us they were doing something outside for employment. They're trying to better themselves. They're trying to increase their income for their families. I don't have a problem with any of that. If it becomes a problem as a conflict of interest, we will address that, certainly. We haven't had a conflict of interest to go address. I, I'd like to just speak that I know I was privy to the emails and I called Dan to talk about it because I was confused and I didn't understand what was going on. And he explained it to me that the information that Tommy sent us was that Todd was applying, and I'm, I'm not going to get all the, the uh, terms correct, he was applying to, to be uh, this, the job that he's applying for. He had to go through the state, Secretary of State of, the, of, the, of Vermont. And he had to go through that process and list the town offices as his business office. Then, and that's, that was mandated, then he went within a few days and changed it to his personal. Can, can, I, can I explain that? Number one, I, I get a little uncomfortable talking about personnel issues in an open meeting um, because, you know, I think there are some things that that's, I can, I'm willing to explain, but I think there's a limit on what I'd recommend to the board that the board discuss in an open meeting. If there's complaints, I think, they should be brought forth to the board, but I also think you know um, they should be discussed just like with any employee discussed in, in, in 
executive session uh, to afford the employee that privacy when we're talking about personnel issues because those are a privacy issue. Um, at the Secretary of State's office, if you are already registered as an agent, and Todd was at the time registered as an agent of MAP, I think everybody knew that he was at that point in time, if your address is already in that database, you can't just go in and change it if you're doing something different like he was for his own business. He did confer with the Secretary of State's office and they said go ahead and do it and then come back in a couple days and change it so that you, you kind of had to push it through and then go back and change that. So he really didn't intentionally use his town email, email or business address. He wanted to put his personal stuff in there. The system would not allow him to do it. He was following the direction of the Secretary of State's office to be able to register his own private business as anybody has a right to do. And that was explained to Tommy, but it wasn't printed that way. You know, there's a lot of this stuff is like one-sided. I've learned. Well, since that's I've been why on I'm board. here then is to get answers because the same name keeps popping up right. time and again. And we have to ask yourself, why is that? I you know, know that's why I'm here tonight. Yeah, I understand. But we we're trusted by the town, the town's people, the taxpayers to make decisions for the town, to, to help manage the staff, to manage the budgets, to look at things that happen. They, we were elected and we're trusted to do it. And we do it the best that we can. We've got five people here making decisions, seeing everything. We don't always agree on things, but we come up with the right decision in all of our minds we do. You know, we, we do our best. And it's difficult sometimes because it seems like we're not being transparent or not explaining everything. And we really do. Anybody can call my phone or anybody's phone and ask this question about anything that happens, you know, unless it's a sensitive matter that we can't talk about. Um, and it's just unfortunate that, and, and I will say that a couple of the things that, that Todd has done in the past that, that were, were maybe not right makes him be a magnet for everything that he does everything in the past, present, future, he's going to be under the microscope. And that's too bad because, and I said this to Tommy, but he's never printed this. I've been on the board for 12 years, almost 13. And in that time, Todd Thomas, probably one of the best things I ever did for the town with Brian is to hire Todd Thomas. The second one was to hire Dan Lindley. He's done more for the town of Morrisville than anybody else has in the last at least 20 years. And it's unfortunate, but you know, sometimes bad behavior in one, at one time or another time can negate anything good that's been done. But if you, if you go to these business owners and the town people that he's been dealing with over the last 10 years or 12 years, like Howard Menashe, or like Gary Nolan, or like Garrett Herchak, or like Graham Mink, you talk to just a dozen, I could name dozens of people that deal with Todd, and they tell me this guy has done more for Morrisville than anybody else. We by far have had glowing you know, input about him and his conduct and what he's done and the people that he talks to and deals with every single day. And um, I think it's unfortunate that one, one bit of uh, bad behavior you know, can really negate everything. And, and it's sad for me to see all this stuff in the paper all the time, over and over and over again. You know, I feel like he's targeted. I, I said that to Tommy. I, I'd say it in the paper, you can write it down, and Tommy will be calling me tomorrow. You know, but that's how I feel. It's, it's just too bad that it's that way. But we certainly will explain anything that happens in open meeting, unless it's a sensitive issue, and we can't. But something that was printed in the paper, we're more than happy. And I, and I do feel bad a bit because we did vote to change that policy without really talking about it in a meeting, but we all have been up on it and we all talked about it and you know made phone calls, made emails, talked to each other you know, before the meeting. So we knew what we were gonna do, but that, that didn't feel good to the audience that was listening, like, oh, they made that change, didn't even talk about it. So I understand what you're saying. So I, I hope that helps. A little. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on. Let's move to uh, liquor control. Do we have any? No. Thank you. Full business. Discuss and approve Belanger Lane as a town road. 
Do you want to talk about that? <coughs> Kevin, I think it meets all your criteria. Yes. It, it, like that. Everything is right to what we've asked. Ray has done a fantastic job of burning the road. So I think uh, you know, from that perspective, it meets the town's policy as far as road acceptance. I have a motion to approve Belanger Lane of the town road. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I would just. Um, I, I think you know, today could be the effective date. I think the residents, you know, one of the things that should qualify that the residents also need to deed that town or the, the, the property to the town. I think they've already discussed that. They know that. Um, I, don't, you know, I, I don't think there's it's just a matter of getting it done. Um, I did talk to an, the owners of another road that the town had accepted a while back, and they didn't find it to be a painful process to get the deed and everything put together. So I just wanted to go back and double check that. I know. If you have more of it, you have to go through your bank. And, but other than that, um, it certainly meets all the qualifications. But I would like to see the property deeded to the town. Yeah. So, so if it snows tonight, Kevin's going to plow it, right? The rain is going to be fun in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say after we vote, I'm going to amend my motion to include effective. Uh, Tuesday, November 19th, and, uh, with the understanding that the property will be deeded to the town. Second that. Okay. Any further discussion? I think that will be reflected in the minutes because that was all discussed now. The site here. I want to thank everybody like Ray for all the work they've done to try to make this happen. Uh, the other adjoining landowners. Down yeah. camp. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions passed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we'll do new business. Discuss, you guys are easy to work with. Yeah. Discuss Morristown Pickleball League. That's me. I can see you're kind of I excited. See you're smiling. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I haven't seen you on the board. Uh, I'm Jude Crashaw, and I represent the uh, Pickleball League. Um, mostly seniors, but we do welcome younger people to play. <laughs> though I can beat it pretty good. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty good. Um, we, um, we have no place to play in Morrisville because all of the facilities, the gyms and everything are used for either men's basketball or sports for the kids. So we're looking for places. We found a place in Wilcutt and they asked us, well, do you have a, um, a certificate of coverage for insurance? Um, they, a lot, they said, yes, we, you can play with us, but we need that certificate. We don't have a certificate. So a couple of, several of us came to the meeting, went to the meeting a month ago, I guess it was, of the uh, Parks and Rec team. And I've also called the Vermont um, League of Cities and Towns, and they explained to me that we, to get a certificate, so we can play other places, we need to be an official group under the auspices of the Parks and Rec. They also explained then that it's a very simple process of, because you're already covered with insurance, that we would then be covered as an official league group under the Parks and Rec. So I'm here to um, ask for that so we can keep playing and be active. <coughs> um, the town has greatly been playing at Morrisville um, a People's Academy in the summer, and it's been great. They've allowed us to paint pickleball lines on their two courts. Um, so that's been great, but now only Hyde Park has a, a time for us in the mornings, Sunday mornings. And, um, and their gym is really little. Yeah, small gym. It doesn't fit many of us. Can anybody play? Yeah. 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 Come on yeah. down. Yeah, we've advertised it's in the porch form. That's a Yeah, yeah. anyone can easy. play, any ability, any age. It's the fastest growing senior sport, believe it or not. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and um, when I was talking to the, they kept the phone, I was talking to someone today at the Vermont League, I can never get all those in it, Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And I talked to Pam, who's apparently in the senior, a senior um, for the insurance. And she basically said, what, pickleball, why don't you go south like everybody else does to go to Florida? <laughs> and I said, because we want to stay in Morrisville. Town. And we want to play here. And um, 
I have about 50 people on my email list, but it drastically reduces once winter comes because we don't have a facility. So now, the, the big issue right now, the initial issue is a certificate of coverage so we can play because we do have a space. The bigger issue is dedicated space for seniors who also welcome juniors to, um, to stay active all year round, outside and inside in Morristown. How many people play? It depends. Like right now in the winter, because we only have room for one net, it's come down to six people. We've had, we only have two nets at People's. And we've had 15, 15 20, 20 pe people right. waiting for the two nets. Right. So um, four dedicated outdoor pickleball nets would be fabulous. Um, when I first mentioned <coughs> this, um, I was, um, I contacted United Way and and they, within a week, they bought us two nets, all the paddles, and the balls, which is about $500, $600. Um, 